database first or code first? What should I choose? We all had this conversation before. Should I go straight to the database and start building my tables, columns, and relationship? Or should I go to the code and start creating my models and doing some entity framework migrations? Well, why not combining both? Why not combining the power of entity framework migrations with an actual SQL script? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use dbapp to create a proper SQL migration in .NET. So let's jump into the code. I have here a new console application. Let's start by adding the proper NuGet package that we need. So you need to search for dbapp and install dbapp-core and dbapp-sql server. I'm going to use SQL server in this demo. Don't install dbapp the package. This is the old one. And they say this is just to allow easy upgrades from the pre 4.0 version. So exclude that, don't install it. Let's install dbapp-core and dbapp-sql server. Once installed, let's delete everything here and do use dbapp. Okay, so the idea is we will create a folder called scripts and we will have all our SQL script inside of it. Now, let's say we need a connection string. We can set it as a static connection string here or we can use some connection string from the arguments. So you can do something like this, string connection string equal to args.first or default. Or this is our connection string. Let me paste it. And then you can do something like ensure database dot for SQL database because we are using a SQL server new get package and we can specify the connection string, which is connection string. Now, this command here will ensure that the database is created before running any migrations. And then let's create our upgrader, dbup upgrader. So var upgrader equal deploy changes dot two dot SQL database connection string. So here we are saying, hey, DB up, I need you to deploy changes to this database using this connection string. I need you to log to console, true, with scripts. And notice here, we have multiple options. You can use scripts from a file system or from embedded in assemblies, basically embedded in assembly. So when you create a file here, let's call it my script sql you need to go to the property and set the build action as embedded somewhere here embedded resource and when you build it's part of the package that you have but i don't like that approach and we'll go through that in a bit so let's go back here and specify with script from file system and let's give it the name which is script and then we build our upgrader. And basically what you need to do is var result equal upgrader dot perform upgrade. And you can do some checks after. So if result dot successful, so we have a success, we can success. Yay. And else. Failure. Okay, nice. Now, to work with the scripts from file system, you need to go to the file properties and you need to copy to output directory. Nice. And now let's do a simple table creation. So this is an order database. So let's create a table order. So create table order orders. So ID int primary key not null. And we have a title var char 200 not null. And that's it. So now let's rename this file to create orders to refactor. So create orders. This is the file and 
Here, we are going to perform an upgrade and we will create that file. So, DB up will go to the script folder, order all the files in alphabetical order, and then start running one by one. And the power is DB up will automatically create a version table where any script that is deployed will be marked as deployed. So next time when you run the migration, it will not run the same script again. So if we run the program, make sure to specify the copy output. Okay, notice here, the first one is create database orders. So it didn't find the database, so it created the database and then start by the database upgrade, checking where if we have a journal table exists. We don't have one, so we executed a database script create order and creating the schema version table. So let me jump into SQL database. This is the Azure Database Studio, Azure Data Studio. Notice here, I don't have any database in my local host server, but if I refresh, I will have orders. So let me create a query here. And basically, if I select to see all of the tables, I should see a table called schema versions and another table called orders. So if I select for orders, ID title, nice. And if I select a schema version, you will notice here, the first item is create order.sql and this is the applied date time. Nice, perfect. Now, if I go to the code and run it again, I will get directly a success, checking the journal table, schema table version is exist and the existing table is, is already being executed. Perfect. Now, I can create another script Let's call it insert orders. And here, let's rename it to SQL. And here we can do some insert. So insert into order and we can have values. So one and order one, maybe another one, order two. Or maybe I did some mistake here. Mistake. Okay. Why not? You need to make sure that you copy to output directory, but I'm going to show you a trick here. So we don't change that for any script that we are adding. So go to your CS prosh file here. Let's remove this one. Make sure you have a star here and any file under script folder will be copied to output. Change that to include, and that's it. Now any file that we are adding, it will be automatically added to the output. And if we go to the file scripts, you will notice we have insert orders automatically here. Now run, let's see our failure. Basically we added a script that is not correct. and. We have an exception here with a failure, and then we have the number of columns for each row and table should be the same. So basically, we go to the file and we update the script. Run. Yay, we have a success. And if we go to the database, schema versions will have another record. And if we select for orders, we will see our records. So you got the idea. You can create SQL script, do whatever, create tables, columns, relations, anything, add data, add some default data, like country, city, something like that. And then you run the tool and everything will be populated. And the beauty is you can run it to different connection strings. So let's say this is a dev local connection string. But when I ship that tool, I can run it into the dev environment. Later on in our CI CD pipeline, I can run it provided with another connection string, which is staging connection string. And I can run the same migration into staging. 
and till production, which is very cool. But let's take it a step further. So basically, if I create now a new file called appendData.sql, the order of it will be the first one. So now this will be run at first, but this is incorrect. So one way to do that, you can go here and create the file, maybe with some prefix 001, or maybe with a date, 2024, whatever the date is today, it's 10 something. So you can do that, or you can do the thing that I did. I created a new migration in Rider. I created a file template, add db up migration. If I create that, it will provide me with a script name. So let's call it create table. Table customer. Okay, notice here, it appended the date with the exact time, the username, and the name of the script that I provided with a pop-up, .sql, and it has a small comment here created by Muhammad Book on this date. So this is the date now in the past for you. And here you can do some create table customers ID, ID, int, not null, primary key, something like that, and then title or name. This is a customer name, varchar, 200, whatever. Okay. Now I'm going to delete the previous script. And so this is create table. Let me expand that a bit. And we can add another DB up migration. Let's call it up. add default customers. So we have default customers data. Data. It will create another one with a proper order. And here we can insert into customers. Same thing, values. So let's say one Mohammed. Two is John. Save. Now we can use the same database. It's fine. Let's run it. We executed both scripts. So now if another developer in our resource, in our team, in the same version control and Git, can go and create another script using this plugin. This is the template that I created and we will have the name of that person in the file. So basically, if we both created the same file with the same name at the same time, we will not get any conflicts because we have different username, basically. If you go to the database, let's select on schema version, you will see the name of the file. Let me show you how I did create that uh, file template. So if you go to in Rider, you can go to the settings, editor, file templates, and I choose other languages. And I added this one. So I created a new one and I provided with this tags. Basically, Rider will change that at runtime. So it's here, month, day, hour, minute, seconds, underscore, the user, which is the username that you are logged in with and the script name. Once you add a script name, it will be inside the pop-up and I populate the file with a, some comments. So just for convenience. So yeah, this is how you can use DBUP to create migrations in .NET without leaving your IDE and using the power of SQL to create any secret script. So that will be it. Make sure to check my other videos here and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.